Hello everyone, I am Janak Avasti from Nepal. Welcome to you all on Janak Lecture Series. For more updates, please subscribe my YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash Janak Lecture. Hit a like on my Facebook page www.facebook.com slash Janak Lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about the histology of bone. Before talking about the histology of bone, we will talk about the gross feature of a long bone. And then we'll move towards the histology of a compact bone and along with that we'll study about the different types of the bone cells. So this is the gross morphology of the long bone. The long bone has got the two ends, proximal end and the distal end. And this proximal end and distal end, they are externally covered with the articular cartilage, usually the hyaline cartilage. And the composition of these two ends which are also called as epiphysis, they consist of the spongy type of bone which are containing the red bone marrow and this epiphysis it is separated with the shaft of the long bone which is also called as a diaphysis. The shaft of a long bone it is also known as diaphysis. So epiphysis and diaphysis they are separated with the help of the cartilaginous plate which is present over here and when we see about the morphology of the shaft of the long bone the shaft of the long bone it is externally lined with the periosteum that is the fibrous membrane and this periosteum it is attached with the surface of the compact bone over here with the help of a fiber known as surface fiber so periosteum are attached with the long bone with the help of surface fiber and internally the shaft of a long bone it encloses a cavity which is known as medullary cavity so this medullary cavity it consists of the yellow bone marrow in the adults and this medullary cavity it is lined with a membrane which is known as the endosteum so internally the shaft of a long bone it is lined with endosteum and peripherally it is lined with the periosteum and the nutrient artery enters to the nutrient foramina which divides into the branches within the medullary cavity and supplies the bone now let's have a look of the compact bone the wall of a bone on the shaft so when we look at the wall of a shaft we can see over here it is lining the medullary cavity over here so the cavity enclosed over here is the medullary cavity which is containing the yellow bone marrow in case of the adult and just adjacent to this cavity we can see the part of a shaft which is different from the other part of a shaft so the shaft consists of the two types of bones the peripheral one is the compact bone and the part of a shaft which is enclosing the medullary cavity it is known as the spongy type of bone and the compact bone it consists of the number of structure that we are going to study today in this lecture so when we see the compact bone which is present externally we can see it is present like this so we'll deal with this structure one by one so when we move from outward to inward as we previously deal that externally the shaft of a long bone it is lined with a membrane that is known as the periosteum so this periosteum histologically it consists of the two layer the outer layer is the fibrous one which is the fibrous layer and inner layer it is the osteogenic layer which consists of the bone forming cell which is known as osteoblast so osteoblast which are the bone forming cell they are present in the periosteum in the inner layer of the periosteum which is the osteogenic layer and this periosteum it is attached with the surface of a bone with the help of this thin thread like structures which are known as surface fiber and the periosteal artery it perforates this periosteum and enters into the compact bone so we'll study about this slightly later on now when we see the structure of a compact bone we can see this hole is the compact bone and inner towards this it is the spongy type of bone 
and this spongy type of bone it is lining the medullary cavity over here now when we see this compact bone externally and internally it is lined with a concentric layer which is known as the concentric lamina which is one of the type of a lamina that is present in the compact bone so we externally whole of this long bone just beneath this periosteum it is lined with the layer or the lamella which is known as the circumferential lamella so this is the outer circumferential lamella and similarly the circumferential lamella it is present on the inner side of a compact bone which is present circumferentially like this which is known as the inner circumferential lamella so we have the different types of three different types of lamella present in the compact bone out of them one is the circumferential lamella so circumferential lamella has the two subdivisions one is the outer circumferential lamella which is present just beneath the periosteum and another one is the inner circumferential lamella which is just adjacent to the spongy or the trabecular type of bone and in between this circumferential lamella there is the presence of the haversian system so this haversian system it is also known as the ostium and within this ostium there are the presence of the number of structure we will be dealing those slightly in, in a short delay and in between this haversian system or the ostium there are the presence of the other types of lamella which are very short and present in between the angles of the haversian system and these are known as the interstitial lamella so interstitial lamella are present in between the angle of the ostium so we studied till now we studied about the two different types of lamella one is the circumferential lamella which is two of two types outer circumferential lamella and the inner circumferential lamella another type of lamella we studied that it is the interstitial lamella now we are going to talk about the haversian system so the haversian system in the midline it consists of the canal which is known as the haversian canal and this haversian canal consists of the blood vessels and this canal it is externally surrounded with the different lamella which are present in the concentric manner which are known as the concentric lamella so it is the third type of lamella present in the bone one is the circumferential lamella next is the interstitial lamella and the third one we talked about it is the concentric lamella which are present in a spiral form around the haversian canal in a concentric fashion that's why we it is call it as a concentric lamella so which are present around the haversian canal uh, so i told that the haversian canal consists of the blood vessels we can see over here the blood vessels are present within the haversian canal so this is the one ostium similarly there is the next ostium this is the next ostium this is the next ostium so in the compact bone there is a presence of the number of the ostium or the haversian system and this one ostium it communicates with the next ostium through the canal which is present within the compact bone that is known as the Volkmann canal and this Volkmann canal finally it communicates with the medullary cavity over here like this we can see the ostium is communicating with the medullary cavity blood vessels with the blood vessels present in the medullary cavity so the haversian canal which consists of the blood vessels it communicates with the another haversian canal through a canal present in a bone which is known as the Volkmann canal so vertical one is the haversian canal and this horizontally present canal which is containing this blood vessels is known as Volkmann canal now let's have a talk about this ostium how does it looks like so the ostium it consists of the different types of cell and when we see this ostium see externally it is lined we can see over here there is a presence of the bone forming cell which are known as the osteoblast b for both and osteoblast has got the b so that is the mnemonics to remember the osteoblast so this osteoblast they are derived from the mesenchyme and this forms the matrix and initially form matrix they are not mineralized 
or the, there is the absence of the calcium deposition and this hypermineralized state of the newly formed bone is known as osteoid. So osteoid are the newly formed bone which are hypermineralized in a state. And later on there occurs the deposition of the minerals and they become calcified or mineralized like this. And this mineralized matrix they enclose this bone forming cell with the osteoblast now these cells now are they are called as osteocytes so the osteoblast after being enclosed within the mineralized structure of a bone now they are known as the osteocytes and the location in the compact bone where these osteocytes are present that is known as lacuna so these osteocytes they are present in the lacuna and when we see this lacuna, we can see one osteocyte, this is present in one lacuna and the osteocyte is present in the next lacuna and the, we can see the next lacuna containing the osteocytes and this one osteocytes can communicate with the next osteocytes through a canal known as canaliculi. We can see over here, this is one osteocyte and these osteocytes are the different processes which pass through the canal in a bone that is known as canaliculi. So the canaliculi are the structures through which the processes of the osteocytes communicate with the next osteocyte. Similarly, the Wolfsman canal, it is the canal containing blood vessels where the Haversian canal of the one osteon communicates with the next osteon. So that is the basic difference. And there are the other types of cells in the bone which is known as the osteoclast. Remember C, C for cutting. So these are the bone cutting cells which help in the remodeling of a bone. And they are derived from the macrophage monocyte system. So there are the four different types of cells. Osteoblast, osteocytes, osteoclast. So these are the different types of a cell present in the bone and the newly formed bone it is known as osteoid. So after viewing this we will now look at the three dimensional structure of what we studied just now. Another type of cell that I forgot to mention is the osteogenic cell which is present in the periosteum. Now we will look at the three dimensional structure of a compact bone or say the shaft of a long bone. When we see this is the shaft of a long bone, the cut part of a shaft of a long bone and we can see over here two different types of bones are present in the shaft. The inner which is lining the medullary cavity it is the cancellous bone or the spongy type of bone and outward this is the compact bone and this we can see over here the spongy type of bone it has the different porous structure which line the medullary cavity and the compact bone it is quite rigid and when we see this compact bone this compact bone it is composed of the Haversian system or the osteon so we can see the the Haversian system over here this Haversian system consists of the different concentric lamella which is enclosing the Haversian canals, the Haversian canal which consists of the blood vessels. So we can see over here the compact bone, the compact bone consisting of the number of the Haversian system. So this is one Haversian system and similarly we can see the other Haversian systems are present over here. So number of the Haversian system are present and in between the Haversian system there is a presence of the interstitial lamella that we just studied and on the periphery all the systems it is enclosed within the circumferential lamella which is present over here that is known as the outer circumferential lamella and the circumferential lamella which is present just ad adjacent to this cancellous bone it is known as the inner circumferential lamella and we can see the Haversian canal it consists of the blood vessels and one Haversian canal it communicates with the next Haversian canal through a transversely running canal that is known as the Wolfsman canal. So I hope this lecture was fruitful. Thank you very much for watching.